Hello and welcome to this Medic Mind video where today we're looking at privatisation and that's both in the NHS as well as abroad. And this forms part of a series of videos that we're running looking at NHS hot topics and this is to help you in your medical interviews that might be coming up. Before we get started today, pause the video now and have a think to yourself about what kind of system is the NHS. Is it public? Is it private? Or is it somewhere in between? And can you think of any other countries which do things differently? Let's start at the beginning then. So what is private healthcare? Well, private healthcare is any healthcare where a private company forms a contract with an individual or insurance company to help provide care to a patient. Now that's done without the government's involvement. And that can lead to a two-tier system of healthcare because people pay insurance companies to provide for their healthcare in the event that they were hospitalised. Now those who are well off can afford these insurance companies, whereas those who are less well off might not necessarily be able to afford insurance and as a result they have to pay at the point of healthcare out of their own pocket. That can be very expensive, which can deter those less well-off individuals from getting the treatment that they need. As a result, private healthcare in countries such as the USA is associated somewhat to an increasing degree of inequality. The process of privatisation, therefore, is the transfer of services run by the government to a private company. Now, that doesn't necessarily have to mean that individuals have to pay out their own pocket at the point of use. It can still be public at the point of care. That essentially means that the NHS can contract private companies to run certain services within the NHS. That might lead to private companies being involved, but not necessarily charging the individual. Instead, the private company charges the government, which then funds the service through general taxation, just like a public healthcare system. So how then is privatisation affecting the NHS? Well, the first thing to know, and the thing that's often forgotten about interview candidates, is that privatisation has already happened to some degree in the NHS, and a large proportion of money actually goes to Bupa, Virgin Healthcare, and Care UK in the UK. These are all private companies. However, but it's not the majority. So approximately 7.3% of the annual budget is actually spent for private companies, and that totals 9.2 billion every year. So even though it's a large amount, it's not quite the majority by any means. Now, some specialities are more affected. So for example, mental health care attracts 30% of its involvement from private health care companies. And you might want to question why that might be in particular. So what then are the pros and cons of privatisation? Well, the first is that the current system isn't entirely sustainable. In fact, due to the ageing population, there's associated with increased cost, so private healthcare companies can help to plug those gaps. The second is that competition can actually be good, and this was a major outcome of the 2012 reorganisation of the NHS, where CCGs can now contract services to private companies much more easily. That was intended to increase competition for contracts to help both public and private companies offer efficient value for money healthcare services. And like we were saying before, this is still public at the point of care. It's still free for patients at the point of care and funded through general taxation. So there's no sort of two tier system of healthcare like we see in the USA. It may also lead to faster treatment. So already patients can opt to go private and privately pay a company to help speed up the amount of treatment they can get and potentially offer higher quality treatment. That can help a lot of individuals access treatment more easily. And for those doctors in those private companies, it might be associated with better working conditions. So more freedom, more flexibility to offer treatments that doctors know work, as well as more sort of respect, more pay associated with private healthcare. Onto the cons then, it kind of goes against NHS principles, which suggest that healthcare should be free to all, and it's all about equality. If privatisation was introduced, particularly if it was paid for by individuals at the point of use. That may lead to inequality that we see, for example, in the USA. The second is that doctors don't always agree. So two thirds of doctors in recent surveys have reported feeling uncomfortable with the idea of private healthcare companies operating within the NHS. There may also be a private monopoly over care. So for example, in contracts that the government has previously done, where the government pays a private company to build a hospital, for example, 
that can lead to a monopoly of care where the government doesn't get good value for money. Private healthcare, as well done at the point of individual payments, leads to potentially unnecessary treatments and investigations, simply because the individual is paying for it and actually these can be done, not necessarily because they should be done on a cost-benefit analysis. On a future level, there's also the fear that we would evolve into insurance systems, and that introduces the fear of this two-tier system operated by the USA, which leads to this inequality. Finally, you might argue that companies are profit-motivated, that actually, because they're out there to make money, they might not have patients' best interests at heart, and as a result, that may lead to substandard care. So here's an MMI station for you to practice all of those pros and cons that we've just discussed. Pause the video now and have a go for yourself before carrying on the video where you can see an expert response from one of our candidates. Different countries have varying types of healthcare system. In the UK, the NHS is proud to be free at the point of delivery. And I believe that there are many pros to this. First of all, healthcare could be argued to be a human right. Um, it should be affordable for everyone, regardless of your income. And therefore, it's important to have the healthcare system free at the point of delivery. Also, it reduces the disease burden. For example, if a patient was diagnosed with cancer, it can be quite overwhelming to have to pay hundreds of thousands of pounds when you perhaps can't afford it for certain types of treatment like chemotherapy or radiotherapy. So therefore, it reduces inequality in the world because if patients have a huge disease burden, they can really be knocked back financially. Also, the NHS and free healthcare systems can improve public health. So if the country is healthier in general, people, people could be happier, and this could lead to them working better and improving economic um, prospects of the country as well. So therefore, it all links into a better society, a better economy, and a better GDP overall. Also, if healthcare wasn't free, then certain things may not be picked up as early as they are. So for example, if a, a woman had a breast lump, they may not go and get it investigated if it costs, for example, £80 for a checkup at their GP. But because it's free, it means that the woman is more likely to go get checked up. And if they do have breast cancer, they'll be found out a lot earlier and therefore treatment pro prospects will be much better. However, there are some cons of free healthcare. One could argue that without private competition, there's less efficiency, there's less drive for creativity, and therefore the NHS can become slightly complacent. Also, there is some financial limitations. Because it isn't a private company, the NHS will always have limited materials, limited money, and therefore things like waiting times in A&E and waiting times for things like surgery will always be present and always be long. Um, so therefore, one could argue that if it was a free private market, having lots of different private companies striving for customers could lead to improved healthcare all round. Thanks for watching this video. Click below to subscribe and catch more of our videos. To watch our full online course and find out how you can enrol onto our award-winning programme with personalised one-to-one tutoring, online weekly webinars and more, click here.